Hello, I'm Brian Nusser from How To Automotive. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why your BMW may be leaking oil and one of the most common overlooked reasons for that reason. So yes, it's very common for BMWs to leak oil and the seals to get hard and stuff, but in some cases, you have just recently changed the gaskets and it's leaking again. Well, one of the most common reasons for that is because of the positive crankcase ventilation, the PCV uh, system or valve on the BMWs that go bad. And what happens is that creates pressure in the crankcase, which pushes out oil from all the seals, especially if the seals already have a little age on them. So you might discover all of a sudden, one day you went out there and you had no oil leaks, and next thing you know, you've got a oil leaks from all over the place from the oil pan the oil filter housing and valve covers cam seals crank seals whatever uh if it happens all of a sudden there's a good chance that your pcv system has malfunction allowing extra crankcase pressure to build up in there and push that oil out so in this video i'm going to show you exactly how to swap out the pcv on your bmw uh, so come with me, we're going to get started and I'll explain to you a little bit how it works as we go. To help explain how the PCV system works, I got this old piston here from my shop. Uh, this came off an old diesel pickup, but anyways, I wanted to explain to you what's going on, how come you build pressure in your crankcase that causes the oil leaks to happen on your BMW. So what happens is the uh, piston rotates down as drawing air and fuel into the combustion chamber rotates back around it gets compressed when the valves close it compresses the uh, mixture here and then it fires it off with the spark plug and then so what happens is crankcase pressure builds up when the when it fires it off the pressure is greater than what the rings can handle and some of that pressure goes from in here in this little chamber goes below into the crankcase and uh this valve here is designed to vent that pressure out so what the pcv does is it uh, as the pressure builds up here it vents it back out but not out to the atmosphere it vents it back out into the intake manifold and it goes back into the combustion uh, uh chamber and gets reburned again so it's not only is it uh preventing oil leaks and stuff like that and pressure building up in the engine but it's actually a emissions device so right here we got the heart of the pcv system and everything else you see here is kind of the supporting connections that go to the engine uh, to the valve here and links everything together. So uh, it's best to buy this in a kit like I did here. I got this from FCP Euro. Uh, came with everything you see here. This over here is for the valve cover and the oil filter housing. But everything over here is for the PP PCV breather system. Uh, it's much easier to get the whole kit because if you try to take any of these things off, they get hard and brittle over time and they can break. So it's better to just get the whole kit that way you change everything, everything is brand new and this makes it for an easy job. So for the most part, the PCV system is underneath the intake manifold here. So we need to remove just about all this stuff here, work underneath the manifold and get that out. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna start by getting the, uh, the air cleaner assembly out, unplug the mass air. I'm gonna uh, I'm do the hose clamp here. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter bolt here. This, on this particular car, the PCV, I mean, the uh, uh, coolant reservoir is linked here. And I may just take this off because if I break this uh, uh, port off here, then I have to put a radiator in. So I'm going to take the hose off. It may leak a little bit of coolant, but not too much. And then I'll re I will just rotate this out of my way. Okay, now we're going to get this. Uh, mine has a vacuum line going off the vacuum booster T here. I'm going to use a pick tool put it down in here and kind of flare this open. We don't want to puncture the boot because we're going to reuse this half of it. We do have a new uh, lower half that goes onto the idle air control motor below. But so I'm going to get this in here and just loosen it up a little bit and then separate the hose like that. Try not to break it. Now there's a couple hose clamps here. Now I got this kind of handy tool here it's a flexible uh, a bit driver with a six millimeter head on it works perfect for bmw hose clamps uh, and it makes it really life easier when you get back here and start removing the hose clamps uh, this one made made by her zeds i will uh, link one up in the description of the video uh, you'll see a little pop up pops up on screen if you want to check that out you can get that by clicking on it it will be an affiliate link so loosen up the clamp and then separate the boot here. I 
did not loosen up the, the second clamp here, just uh, the first clamp here, I loosened up the second clamp. We're gonna reuse all this. The second uh, portion down here has an elbow that goes to the uh, idler air control motor and that likes to tear, especially if it gets a little aged. That's why we got a new one in the kit. So for right now, we're gonna set this aside. Now we need to get this little box you see right here off. You're gonna squeeze the tab, unplug the electrical connector. There's gonna be a T30 Torx bolt here and a T30 Torx bolt here. And then this will slide out and then come out. There'll be a little uh, flapper motor in here. This controls uh, air flow and tumble inside the intake manifold. So we're gonna remove this next. So I've removed this bolt here. Now I'm gonna remove the bottom one here. And all the tools that I'm using, I will also link up in the description. That way, if you want to pick any of those up or need any of these type of tools, you can find those links. Now you can take the box and work it out. You want to inspect this. Uh, this little rivet on the end can break sometimes, and then that gets sucked into the engine and can cause problems. So you want to check that out, make sure that's in good shape. If it's not, you want to order one. Next, I'm going to get this little electrical box off. There's a 10 millimeter bolt here and here, and then I'll be able to fold it back. I'm not going to take it out of the car completely. You just, just get it out of my way enough. Right here is the connector for the idle, uh, idle air control motor. Squeeze the tab right here and unplug it. And then they will get this to push out. Also right here on the throttle, right below the throttle body, right in the middle, there's another 10 millimeter bolt holding this, this harness on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one. It's right there. And if you look under there, you'll be able to see it. The harness will come out enough where we can get in here and work. Now we're gonna remove the, the T, uh, 30 torques here and here and remove the idle air control motor. This will come out On uh, my car the throttle cable is hooked up on it. A lot of them are electronic throttles So depending on your model, we may have to work around this right here. I'll let you know in just a second a T30, but it actually is a T40 Let's see here the throttle body hooked up i'm just going to pull the eye layer control motor off like this on mine like i said it has the throttle cable hooked up to it i'm gonna leave it hooked up on your model you may or may not have a cable uh, i may have an electronic one and i'm just going to leave that there and just kind of push it off to the side and then we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolt here here and there's going to be one here and one right there we're going to remove those and i'm not going to unplug anything i'm just going to Leave it all plugged in, but just pull it out here to the side. We just need to get access so we can get down here and we can get the PCB valve, as you can see it back there under the intake off. So there's a couple screws. There's a screw there. And then once I get this out of the way, you'll be able to see the other screw and we'll remove those. And then also you can see the hose here and also you see how it's, uh, it looks like it's coated in oil. That's from the valve itself leaking. So it's a good idea, good thing we're changing this. To get to the bolts on the throttle body, I'm just using a little extension with a flex head ratchet right here. The hardest one to get to is the bottom one right here. Just moving this out of my way, kind of have to push the wiring harness down, pull it and just kind of move it out of your way. So you can get the four bolts off and then the throttle body will come out here. And uh, we don't need it all the way out. If it gives me a little trouble, I might take it completely out but we'll see so i unbolted the throttle body and i just pulled it out here just like this i believe the cables all hooked up also right here on the side here we're going to just connect the the evap uh, purge valve here so we're going to unplug this here just squeeze the tab and unplug the connector and then we're going to pop it off the little boot right here and then we're going to be able to get to a couple t30 torque screws here and here and just get a bracket out of the way so we can get our hand back here to help get everything unplugged and plugged back in later. And then we're gonna work on the vent tube here, get the top cover off here so we can get to the other vent tubes going across. So like I said, I unplugged the EVAP valve, uh, purge valve here. So unplug that, 
hold it off its rubber mount here. Now I'm going to remove the two screws here. Now we can get our hand back here and get access to underneath the intake to unplug the, uh, the vent lines going into it. All right, now that you got the uh, vent valve unplugged, now you can go ahead and take the covers off, take the 10 millimeter out, take the 10 millimeter out, take this top cover off and set this aside. All right, so this is why it's a good idea to order a kit and get everything when you're doing this because it's all made out of plastic. So we got the vent line that goes from here over here and it goes underneath this here. And it's like really hard to get in there and squeeze the tabs and pull them off. Sometimes you're successful and you can do it. Uh, and, but most of the time what I do is I just stick a pick in here and just break the tab off and then it was, and now it's super easy to just pull the hose off. Uh, same thing here, it's um, super difficult to, to uh, get this catch here to release. You'll see it right here. Uh, I'll bring you a little closer and you'll see that there. It's easier just to cut it off. And then uh, there's the elbow right here. We got that as well. And then right here, the vent line here, this one's usually the, the only one that's halfway easy to get off. So you just squeeze the tabs and pull it off here. So I'm gonna bring you in for a little closer look so you can see what I'm talking about here. So I'll start back here in the back. Right here, I'll just use a screwdriver or a pick tool and I'll go in here and I'll just twist them and break these little ears off. And once they get them broken, then you can just pull it off right here. So you don't want to break the ear, the mount here. So you just want to be carefully snap these little mounting tabs off. Usually a pick tool works best for that. And once they're broken, then you should be able to just pull this straight out. Now you can see how I broke the tabs and I just once they're broken, you just pull it out like this. Now, we're gonna do the same thing here, except for instead of uh, breaking the tab. So this one here goes right here. I'm gonna get this hose off here by just basically cutting right here. Just cut the cut it off. Uh, you can use side cutters or you can break it off. Doesn't matter, just get them in here. Usually they're pretty brittle, especially if they got some age on them and you just take that off right there you can try squeezing the tab and uh, pulling this off i found that they hardly ever come off so i just use a pair of side cutters cut it now you can pull this out you can either unplug this or just work it out like that all right so this is the hose here it's right here it goes through the intake like this it makes like a 90 degree turn like that and this actually hooks to the bottom of the PCV valve. So we're going to start by removing this start, this portion of it first. So it came in a kit. So I recommend buying it like this. That way you don't have to mess with this underneath the intake. It's easier just to snap these little these little things off of a pick. Just break them off and then you can pull them off and get it out. Uh, if you're trying to reuse this stuff, you got to squeeze these tabs and flare these tabs open to get it off. And then the O-rings may or may not reseal. So it's better off to buy these in the kit i will link the one i'm using for this z3 up but if you're um whatever model uh bmw i recommend you check the uh make sure that the right part numbers for you i used fcp euro they're not sponsoring this video uh, but um they do have everything in stock for these these type of bmws so i'm gonna get down in here and i'll show you a close look at how i get these out now this one i'm just going to use a hook tool like this reach in here and break the little tab off here and here and then pull it off of the port right here once you break the tab and pull it out like that now we're going to go on the other side of the intake and we're going to work from the other side i also got this one unplugged so we're going to work on getting this out and getting the pcb out now with that gap that we created we're going to work on getting this hose right here out so that goes take as you can see there so you can reach your hand back here grab that hose uh, most likely you won't be able to squeeze the tab this way you can reach the other hand around this side and you can try to squeeze the tab or you can use that pick tool and snap those little ears off so this one on mine I already reached in here I was able to get my fingertips actually on there and just squeeze a little bit and pop it off uh, it came off really easy most of the time this was a pain in the butt and you can see I just work it out right here so it's in there like this and like what I'm doing is just 
squeezing this tab. And if I can't do that, I'll use my pick tool and I'll come from this side here and I'll basically I'll break the little tab here or here and then work it. We don't care if we break the hose because we've already cut it on this end and then get it off. So now we're gonna work on getting this hose off next because it's mounted here underneath the manifold on there. The one we just took off was the one mounted right here. So we're gonna get this one off next. Then after we get that one off, we'll pop our vacuum line here off right here and then we'll unbolt it the two screws and then pull the pcv valve out right there so i'm gonna maneuver this around where i can get to it you can see the valve right there same thing if it won't come off without without just squeezing the tab then I will literally break it. I'll get a long screwdriver down there and just break the tabs, break the little ears off, and then this this will pop off. So after breaking the tab off, I was able to work it out and get it out. And as you can see, it's oily and gross. It's been leaking for a long time, so definitely part of our problem. Now we're ready to unbolt the PCV and get it out. There's two mounting screws, one here and one here. They're going to be torques. They're going to be, I believe, T30s. So you can see them right here. You can reach under with a little extension. We'll grab that one there, and the other one will be right here. All right, once you get the two mounting screws out, now you can just take the PCV valve and work it out like this. I left the vacuum line on until I got it out here. Now I can remove it. And there is the valve. All right, now we're ready to go back together. So not all BMW models have the vacuum line on it. If yours does not have it on your old one, there's gonna be a plastic cap that goes right here. You need to take that off your old one and install it onto your new PCV valve. Once you've done that, or if you got a vacuum line, you can uh, plug this in. And then once you got it plugged in, now we're going to go ahead and go back in to the uh, vehicle. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in now. This vacuum line is in, in excellent shape, so I'm not going to replace it. Uh, we're going to feed it back down in there. You want to make sure that you got the, the port pointing down to the side, to the side. And then you know you got it going in the right way. So now we're just going to feed it back in there. And then once I get it into position... I will start the two screws and tighten those up. All right, now that I got the PCV valve mounted, both screws, by the way, I reached around this way and I put the bottom screw in first. It was the easiest because I can see it. When I look over like this, I can see the screw. Start that one, then I started the top one. Bolted it up, now it's secure. Now we're gonna take the vent line here that goes to the dipstick. So this end goes on the dipstick tube. This end plugs into the bottom of the PCV. I use a little bit of seal glide or silicone based grease. Um, you can use like um, dielectrical grease. And I put a little bit on the, the O-ring here and this will help it go in and it will help it prevent from rolling the O-ring and make it uh, seat really smooth and easily. So I'll plug this in first. So I'll route it down there where this ends right next to the dipstick. So I'll route it through because you route it behind the little electrical box here. Plug this into the bottom of it. So I'll plug it into the bottom of the PCV, give it a little pull, make sure that it's not gonna pop back off. And I know that's secure. Then I'll mount this tube onto the dipstick and that'll be secure. So it'll look kind of like this. I'll use my um, flashlight to help me guide it underneath here. And then I'll be able to see it because I can see the dipstick here. So now I can route it down there so I know it's in the ballpark reach under here where it goes on to the bottom of the PCV and then clip it on it, you'll hear it clip on also now I give it a little tug make sure it's not going to pop back off now I can reach over here and plug it into the dipstick pretty simple okay next we're going to put the tube here that goes over the top like right here that has the all the elbows on it the one that goes under the intake so we're going to route that down and through 
and as it goes down and through then you kind of twist it to make it where it goes under the intake and then we're going to, with this hand here I'll reach down here and help kind of guide it. Now I'm going to plug it into the side of the PCV through here first before we plug this end on. Uh, let's see. So this one takes a little manipulation to get it in there. Once you get it on there, press it on and give it a tug. Make sure it's not going to pop back off. Also, if you look through this way, you can see it so you they help line everything up. So I'm going to look through this way right here. I was able to see it on there and I heard it click on, giving it a tug. Make sure it's not going to pop back off. Now, okay, now that's plugged in. Now this one here, I'll just line it up with the tabs here. Also, I lubricated those with that seal glide. Click that on until it clicks. Now that's secure, secure, secure. So we're halfway done. So you can see going back together is a lot easier. All right, now we're going to install the vent tube that goes onto the valve cover. So it's just going to route down here, plug in there and plug in there. So before you install it, I recommend you use a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, use a, a blow dryer and warm up the joints here and here. And that'll give it a little bit of flexibility to help line up the tab. So the 90 degree tab is gonna go on the valve cover here. And then the 45 degree angle is gonna go onto the PCV on the bottom there. So I recommend putting the bottom on first, clip that on first. So you may have to mold this into shape, reach under there and clip it on, lubricate the seal with a little bit of uh, silicone paste, uh, both of these, and then you can go ahead and install these. Pretty simple. Once you get it molded into shape, because the way it comes, it doesn't look like it's going to line up. And if you try to bend it when it's cold, it's, it's, it doesn't flex very well. So warm it up with a little blow gun, or not a blow gun, a, a blow dryer or a heat gun. Uh, just enough to make it flexible, and then you can, it'll go right in there. So i got the tube on right here. And put it on to it clicks. You can feel that that sucker click. Give it a little tug, make sure it doesn't pop back off. And then I mold it this one, kind of flex it back a little bit to help line it up. And so the 90 degree turn goes here, 45 degree turn goes down there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh fit tube here on. So I'm gonna put this in on first and then plug this one in, but we gotta route it under here. So just Route it through. You can unplug that as easy, whatever way works best for you. So now we're going to install it onto this port here. Let's line it up and just push it on until it locks into position. I'm going to unplug this and Flip this up a little bit, give me a better angle on it. There it locked into place, it's locked. Now I can rotate this back down. Line it up with the tabs. Push it on till it locks. Plug this back in. And now that's all secure. All right, so the PCV valve is pretty much mounted up. So now we can go ahead and start putting our throttle body and idle air control motor, all that stuff in. As you can see right there, I just knocked it off. But the gasket here is for the throttle body. I got a new one that came with the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. If your throttle body is dirty, super dirty, you might want to clean that now. So I'm going to go ahead and feed this back into position. Leave the, the idle air hooked up, throttle cable hooked up. Everything is still hooked up. I didn't unplug any of this, so there's no codes or anything related to any of this. So I'm just going to put it back into position, put the four screws in and tighten those up. Once I get those tightened up, then I will... Oh, before I do that, there's one thing I wanted to show you. On my car, it comes with a new grommet. I forgot to change that out. So let me pull this back out. Where I can get it. But right here is the grommet for the... Idle air, so this just plugged right into the intake manifold. So I pulled this out. I'm gonna swap this out with a new one. 
So that just goes, you'll see the port right there. You just plug it back in, push it in until it's fully seated. And then the idle air control motor, when it goes in, it just goes into this grommet here. And that makes for a nice clean seat. So I positioned the throttle body in there. I started the top two bolts first, but I got them loose. They're not 100% snugged up. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Now I'm gonna reach down below and start the two bottoms here. The hardest one is the one right here because the wiring harness uh, uh, mount right here is right there. And so once you get that started, I snug up the bottom one first, then this one, then this one, then this one. Or you can do a crisscross pattern uh, and snug those up until they're good and tight. And then after that, then you can go ahead and mount the, um, the uh, idle air control motor next. That'll just mount here. On my case, I have a throttle cable, so I gotta make sure that it's routed into the, the proper grooves here on the throttle linkage here. And then mount that up and then mount the two mounting screws there. So this just presses in there and that's it. And then after that, I'll put the wire loom on and I'll mount the uh, bottom one first, and then the top and then the side. Then I'll take the EVAP purge valve and the bracket, put the bracket on first, mount the purge valve. Anything that got unplugged, I got, looks like the oil pressure switch got unplugged while I was working in there. Plug that back in. Then I'll put the top engine cover back on, air cleaner assembly, and that will complete it. So I got the throttle body remounted. I got the idle air control motor remounted. I got it plugged back in. Before we mount the bracket for here, we need to mount the bracket here. Uh, this is the one for the uh, PCV, uh, not PCV. This is the one for the vent valve, EVAP vent valve here. So we need to install this bracket here, the two screws here. Then you can go ahead and put the, the rubber grommet back on the to the ear here, plug this back in, and then then we can mount this because the screw mounts onto the front of this bracket here. So now I got the throttle body, idle air, and the bracket here all bolted back up. I went ahead and put the throttle boot on, the intake boot here on. So you wanna make sure your clamps are, if you have a throttle cable like I do, are the furthest away from the cable as you can possibly get them. You don't want those to hang up on the cable at all. So I got them on the opposite side here. So I'm gonna tighten these up. And then once I get those tightened up, then I'll put the other portion of the snorkel on here, tighten that up, put the little motor on here. Now we can put the air swirler here. It has a technical name, but I can't remember it for the life of me. Uh, put that in, start the bolt here, the bolt here, and plug the electrical connector in once you're done. All right, now I put the second half of the air snorkel on. Now I can put the air box assembly in now. So on my model, this little round port portion here fits on that ball right there. And then the mounts there. And at the same time, you gotta kind of mount the mass air into the air snorkel. Uh, make sure this is routed over here so you can plug it in. And assemble. So hopefully that cures your oil leaks on your BMW. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and encourage you to subscribe.